Welcome to episode 250 of Control Talk. Now your smart buildings video cast and podcast for the week ending January 7th, 2018. Hard to believe we hit the 18s already. But I tell you what, we missed you guys the last couple of weeks because uh, it was the holidays and we had great holidays. And rumor has it that uh, the man, the myth, the legend, Ken Smyers was seen. Going along the North Pole, and man, he accidentally, he was riding in the sleigh delivering presents, and he is responsible for all the cold air because he accidentally hit the wrong valve, and he started exhausting air conditioning all across the Northeast. So welcome to the show, (laughs) the man, the myth, the legend, the one, the only, Kenny Smyers, the Santa Claus and the control man from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Kenny, welcome to the show, big dog. Well, thank you very much, Eric. It's always great to be here, and no, I had nothing to do with the... uh the incredible cold wave hitting the uh, northeast. Actually, it's hitting the whole states. Uh, it's freezing. It was minus 11 this morning here in Pittsburgh. I uh, think I'm catching something that my wife brought home from the office. And um, yeah, it's a challenge. I, I tell you, but to, to, to me, it's a good and bad thing. I mean, it means that we're turning the bend and spring's about 60 some days away or something. And <laughs> we, we That's a we great way fun- to look at it, man. You talk about the weather being half full instead of half empty, right? I love it, man. That's right. Um, we, we got the little golf presents we got from Christmas to try out, and uh, I uh, I always have to put something on the calendar to keep myself moving forward and, and, and anticipating and looking forward to stuff. Uh, that's why I always like schedules. You know, I put them up there because I can see what I'm, what's happening and what we're going to do next. So you and, uh, kind, you kind of got like the little X, and you X in the days off to uh, the first golf outing, or. No, no, but it, well, you know, to be honest with you, it's an old military thing. If you've ever been, uh, you know, had anything like a camp or whatever, where you have uh, basic training and, and you have to, you know, you. You do have a calendar, you do mark each day off with an X, and everybody does it. It's a uniform uh, therapy session, you know, uh, that we got so many days left. But um, I, no, I, I think what I'm trying to get to is how quickly the control trends awards are approaching. And, They're close, and that, buddy. And this is the week ending, uh, you know, January 8th. So, I mean, my goodness, you know, 14 days, uh, it's going to be over. So, we got uh, a lot of, uh, lot of uh, things to get done, a lot of exciting moments to uh, experience. And uh, we appreciate everybody that's helping us out. I guess it's a good time to really, uh, really clarify something that yeah. uh, I think I, I, I uh, took a nine and made it a six or a six made it a nine. The address for the Hard Rock Cafe in Chicago for our Control Trends Awards this January 22nd uh, in Heart of Chicago, Hard Rock Cafe, great location. Uh, from 5.30 to 9.30 to 5.30 to 6.30 is the VIP event that the EZIO is sponsoring. It's at 63 West Ontario Street. 63, not 93. 63 West Ontario Street, Chicago, Illinois. So people getting into Ubers and getting into cabs, make sure you tell them it's the Hard Rock Cafe Chicago and not the Hard Rock Cafe Hotel. Because that has happened uh, the, the people, the Hard Rock has normally one or two entities in a city the size of Chicago. So there's a hotel there's a cafe so you want to make sure you're going to the Hard Rock Cafe Chicago 63 West Ontario Street Chicago Illinois 60654 well and you know if you just get confused just say take me to the man the myth the legend because everybody knows you in Chicago as they know you everywhere so that's going to be good stuff and and I Kenny I think it's also a good time to sort of bring up that uh, this is a different venue this year we got some exciting stuff planned there's going to be some things we've never done before which we're going to do which we're not going to tell you about you got to come to see it to believe it but what we can tell you is space is going to be at a premium so in the past where we can be you know kind of liberal about tickets because we had you know huge venues this is a much tighter much more intimate uh, venue so so a couple of things make sure you get your tickets make sure you get there early but uh you know we're having to basically uh if you want extra tickets we basically have to charge you for them so uh that's that's one of the differences um so anyway kenny uh it's good stuff there the voting period is still going on so i think we're rocking and rolling with that and uh sure uh who yeah just so many great companies this year huh yeah I, well, we had uh, several sponsors come on here in, in the last uh, week or so we've uh we have project haystack once again thanks guys uh Mark and um, John Petsy and Scott Scott Mench. 
Just got, yeah, uh, Jason Briggs, uh, appreciate it. Uh, Optigo is a sponsor. Uh, BASSD, uh, Alpair, is a sponsor again this year. Uh, we really appreciate it. And um, as you said, that <clears throat> the problem is that if you go on to the Hard Rock Cafe, they actually have a tour 360. So anybody who wants to get a head start and see what the, what they can anticipate, the environment is a club. It's a nightclub style. So when you walk in the door, it's already – you're sitting seats and you're seeing the stage. And so the, the – Clubs built around the stage with a second story. So if you were down there in New Orleans, or if, if you've been to the uh, the last, uh, what was it, the summit, or what was it, Memphis uh, Controls Group, uh, we went to a couple of uh, those bars down there, the Blues Club bars, and everything's elevated. You look down at the stage. It's, it's really a neat uh, venue, but because of the things it's like Pittsburgh, because of the rivers and the, the Allegheny Mountains that were full of cool, the things that made Pittsburgh important also limited it to how big it go and how, how the relative space was limited. And same with the Hard Rock Cafe. We got a beautiful stage. It's going to be a great show. And, and like you said, we've redesigned it. You know, what, nothing would be worse than getting boring and getting routine and everybody, uh, you know, thinks they know what's going to happen. We, we've got so many elements of, of change and surprise. We've disrupted our own show, but uh, we made it really cool. Yeah. I, I can't wait to see how it goes because we've got the, you know some very ch- – uh, the entertainment that we have is, is, is typical now, of you your can, you, But show. you cannot tell them that's a surprise. I'm not going you? to. I'm just – right. You're ex- just saying I'm it's going to be different than we've had before. Yeah, yeah. So no Marilyn Monroe? Well, we took a you know we took a, a look. We, we we realized that there were phases and trends, and just like they change year to year, so do people's tastes. And and uh, we had the more get a little bit of uh, you know reminded that you know we've got a mixed crowd and and uh, professionals, and they don't they don't appreciate some of the uh, you know the the Las Vegas style that uh, that was a, a show that was in Las Vegas. This is a show that's in Chicago, so it's going to be different. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, I, again, and, and and again, thank you to all the sponsors that make it possible, and and the people that support us. Uh, thank you to Hard Rock Cafe folks that really uh, they bend over backwards to accommodate the show and do a great job, and uh, really hooked us up with the right people so that we can have a great show. Yeah, I think we found found a home. But Kenny, look, we got some fantastic guests coming up here in just a little bit, but. Uh, you know, like I said, we were off for the holidays. We had some posts that we need to talk about that were really, really good, I thought. So uh, start us off, big dog. Well, we'll do. the uh, One of the most important uh, things that we talk about in our uh, industry is that everybody's got great products, great solutions, and, and it comes down to telling a story. So one of the categories we have is that there's a most impactful marketing collateral of the year. And collateral stands for anything that, uh, you know, uh, talks, tells the story. So it could be brochures, it could be videos, it can be uh, PowerPoints. But uh, the first one is EasyIOs. The rules have changed. This was an entry that came out of Europe. Johan Schalkerad and the guys over there uh, have a, a very straightforward approach. And, and to them, the, the rules that, that governed our industry for so long uh, have changed because there were limiting factors. There were barriers of entry. And Mike Marston and uh, Lim Hoon Chat and the, and the guys at EasyIO uh, made some of those barriers uh, go away. So the rules essentially changed, and you're in control of your own destiny. And it's a great, great story that EasyIO tells, and they put a great video together uh, to, to represent that. And it's a global, a global approach. It's not limited to just North America or Eastern Europe or Western Europe or uh, the pack rim. It's it's for the whole globe. It's the same product. It's the same. Uh, uh, message. So it's a pretty cool, pretty cool delivery. Well, I got to say to you, Kenny, is easy. I O I O I O. The rules have changed. Yeah, we were actually here when that, <laughs> we were actually in Manchester, England at their uh, global conference when they came up with that. And it was kind of interesting how they did that. Uh, if you ever get a chance to go to an easy I O global conference, it is incredible. Uh, but we actually saw the process. We actually helped in the process, not just us, but people around the globe helped in creating this, uh, this new slogan. And it was, it was, it was quite, quite an event. And, uh, uh, so congratulations to EZIO. Does anybody t- have a chance of beating them out for the plant controller of the year? We'll just have to wait and see, won't we big dog? Yeah. I, uh, the, thing that easy has done uh you know over the years uh since we've been doing this for sure is every year they, they push the envelope they they raise the bar and they put more firepower under the hood and uh, just change the whole aspect of, of how you do things instead of uh, creating a, a controller and putting a router on it you get a router that's top notch and, and super fast with all the latest bells and whistles and then you put some io on it and that uh, really did change the rules as well so next up was another uh very successful company bas 
SG, which is a, a BAS Service and Graphics, and that's Alper uh, Ols Mesler and his team. Out, I believe they're out of Texas, and uh, but they had a nice little newsletter that came out and just talked about how 2017 was such a successful year for them. Uh, they had success on multiple fronts. They completed an HTML5 conversion of Niagara Framework modules, BaseMaker, uh, and then they also got some heavy-duty stuff going on. Uh, so after five years, uh, the completion of a plug-in uh, market started to understand the time savings and value generations that the BAS modules can now provide. Uh, another accomplishment was the creation of a company called Anka Labs. But that's all in the uh, post. We've got a nice uh, you know, direct link to Alper's multiple uh, sites. But uh, they're real proud of their four-dimensional charts. So uh, it's the first time I've ever seen. Uh, I've never, I've never been in, never been aware that there were four-dimensional charting uh, in our in our element. So that's gets the new new envelope push there, and uh, he had another very interesting new development that uh, we have a direct link on it to the uh, to the site. And if you have any um, you know questions or uh, you know because they they have a lot of uh, training going on. Uh, they call it their Axon A X O N training sessions uh, that begin in February, and he's going to be giving uh, Alper and his, his his team are going to be giving away a lot of uh, ponies. We call them uh, you know insights into the new technologies and how you can put it to use in in your in your product solution portfolio. Well, it's very cool, Kenny. And I tell you what, first there was 4K video. Now there's 4D charts, baby. Baby, What's the fourth <laughs> dimension? Do you know? I, I, you can see it. I mean, it, uh, you know, when you have, you know, it's, the old, it's time. Oh, I see it. I see it. Hang on, hang on. I got it. I'm, yeah, I'm going to so pull it up so everybody can take a look at it. Right. All right give so me a second. Have, I'm going to pull it up here. And- to identify something in space, you have, uh, you know, Height, width, uh, you know, and the depth, and then time. So the, the fourth dimension, I believe, is time. Well, there you go. The man, the myth, the legend. If he says it's time, guess what? It is time. <laughs> well, I couldn't find it quick enough, so I took a good guess. <laughs> if I'm wrong, I apologize. But uh, <laughs> well, hey. Alper, yeah, you know, is just he's one of the really nice guys in the industry. If you had any chance to meet Alper, uh, very, very knowledgeable individual, very sort of understated. He's at all the shows. He's always has a booth off to the side. Uh, his stuff, if you actually go in and talk to him, very, very knowledgeable guy. Uh, he does great stuff. He has a great reputation in the industry for delivering on what he says. He's kind of one of the outliers, if you will, you know, a guy that doesn't attract a lot of attention, but, uh, if you're looking for somebody to do some quality work and have quality products, Alper's a good guy to check out. Yeah. And Eric, I just saw this. Uh, there was a couple comments on that post and, uh, Alper, you need to, you need to respond to this. Uh, there's a gentleman asked at the bottom of that post, he says, um, they're designing a system and he was asking a question and I don't think I saw that until just now, but, uh, one of the comment sections we have from, uh, Flint Chickamara says, um, we are looking to have an install or install a system that call alerts our maintenance people when any part of the building system is about to go down or is gone. Uh, so, uh, Alper, you need to get a hold of that gentleman, uh, Flint Chickamara and, and answer him. It looks like you have a potential customer. Well, very cool, Kenny. Very cool. What do we have up next, big dog? Uh, we have uh, Optogy's Proton Innovation and a Building Controller. Uh, and this is another video uh, that has, you know, just a great story in it because uh, the the way the uh, guys, Steve Gazalimian and his team put uh, put their message together is that you've, you've got to make things easy, simple, understandable, but yet effectual. So his thing is, imagine if your building was able to save energy and automate itself. So they've got a great product that overlays on many, many existing legacy systems. But basically, uh, the Proton is an innovative building controller that combines energy and building management features using an intuitive web interface that can connect to a companion iOS or Android application. So economical product manage, it can economically manage up to 100 backnet or mod bus devices. It has built-in programming and tools. And what's really new is it's installer friendly. It has a hundred device support across four ports, built-in web editing tools that display and program, and virtual device support, language translation. So one of the other cool features that uh, Steve showed us is that they have the ability to do instantaneous translations. So this is another global product. So uh, and they've Track the North American market through the West Coast, and uh, they're 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 doing very well. And um, Steve is uh, you know, a brilliant guy. He's been in the business uh, thirty some years. He started out with uh, Phoenix, uh, then he went to uh, Allerton, and then now he's doing his thing at uh, Optergy. Kenny, that's such a cool video. Is that one of the uh, finalists for the uh, uh, most impactful marketing collateral of the year award? 
Yeah. Cool. Remember, folks, you can still vote. The voting has not stopped yet. So uh, it's good stuff. Well, like Steve, and, and again, we thank, thank them for their sponsorship. Next up, Eric, we have Ken St. Clair's Automated Buildings January 2018 theme, The Face of Digital Transformation 2018. And I think it's kind of cool because uh, Ken St. Clair, uh, you know, again, uh, a veteran in the industry of stalwart. Uh, the site they have is it's just simply it's a it's a library of our industry. Everything that uh, came out, every new innovation uh, going back 15 years has been documented very well on Ken's site. Uh, but the the 2018 thrust there's like a, i always consider it a year like a campaign and in january everybody wants to get started but um basically ken says uh came up with an intriguing proposition that we have a digital opportunity to recreate a softer version of ourselves in our industry quote we are all involved in today's digital transformation and have an amazing opportunity to create a new softer mindfulness face for the greater good this month's issue talks all about how we can improve our image as we digitally transform and inspire us all to envision what the world will see when we pull the string on our transformation mask to expose our new inner selves to the world. So it's pretty heavy duty uh, stuff because he combines, uh, you know, this this face mask is is a um, it, it, you have to read it because it's it's complicated but not very complicated. It goes into art and about you know they took wood and they made a mask that the people used in ceremonies uh, to. Uh, cover themselves, and when they take the mask off, there's a new, there's a transformation. They can, that's how you can transform uh, from your former self to your new self, and that's uh, so it's kind of headsy. Uh, I, I, I enjoy it because I, I think Ken really has a you know a knack for uh, like, like teaching. You know, he's a mentor of sorts, but he really truly believes and he's passionate that we as an industry are coming to a pivot point or a transition point or a tipping point. Uh, you know, and that we have a chance to make a, a decision to open things up wider for the benefit, the greater good, a utilitarianism approach versus a proprietary approach where you try to put things into uh, a me first, my stuff. Uh, and, and I think one of his chief concerns is that the big iOS people, the big people in the sky, the cloud providers that do all the services uh, that have access or will one day sell us back information that was a uh, data that was ours, but it'll be processed. It'll be oh, I up. think that's probably coming, but you know, I refer back and we need to repost our uh, video interview with Rolene Oaks uh, from the channel group. Cause she really addresses, you know, these sort of sea changes and what's coming and, and has a playbook. So we'll, we'll see if we can get that posted again this week, but we also need to get Ken on. We need to get Ken on the show. Sure. Ken Sinclair, wherever you are, hope we will have a time to get you on next week before the control trends awards. And uh, we definitely got to talk about this issue, but to Kenny's point, uh, if you want to know what's not just going on now, but what's going to be going on, Ken Sinclair, I tell you what, if he was a stock picker, you'd be a millionaire or billionaire, maybe a trillionaire. I don't know because he's, he's that damn accurate with what he picks. So uh, good stuff with Ken. And while we're doing that, let's do a shout out to uh, Therese Sullivan and uh, buildingcontacts.me. Somebody else you want to check out and our good friend, Josh Bradshaw out in the Valley, the Silicon Valley. So, uh, you know, all uh, control trends personalities that uh, we wish you a happy new year and look forward to 2018. And also a shout out to our friend, Phil Zita. We hadn't talked about Phil in a while, Kenny and, and Kenny and Phil is uh, gone his own now he's doing training and phil's a very very knowledgeable guy about building automation controls and a great resource to sort of get educated so we got to get phil we got to get you on the show too phil you can run but you cannot hide yeah phil's uh he's, he's had several uh releases here in, in the beginning of the year that um He's really excited. He's got some. Uh, he's got a training program that he's trying to. Uh, you know, obviously he needs to get people to uh, you know take his proposition seriously because he left his day job and, and became a full time professional trainer. And is yeah, he's very bright. Uh, he's up for he's up for trainer of the year too. I think Kenny Kenny. He sure is. So he's yeah. one of the finalists there. So if you like, uh, what do you call him? Uh, fearless, fearless Phil. Fe fearless Phil Zito. Yeah. Well, I tell you what, it is pretty fearless creature day job because I think he had a pretty damn good day job. So. So you talk about a guy who's dedicated to the cause and uh, uh, Phil definitely is another guy that deserves uh, being checked out. Yeah. I, uh, I, I think he's going to do well. I, 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 we have seen, uh, you know, him grow uh, his community, uh, the BAM nation, building automation monthly nation from. Uh, you didn't call him the damn nation. Did you? Bam, 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 Bill, bam, 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 bam. Okay. Like bam, bam from, okay. I got you. Okay. The BAM nation. Okay. Anyhow, our, our friend Josh Spanish, just came back from, uh, 
the the CES in Las Vegas, and, and uh, I saw some of the posts he had up there on Facebook, and uh, right. he's, that's where that's the cusp of new technology. He was well, we did, a well, Mercedes well, well, van that was incredible. It's like uh, yeah. futuristic, uh, you know, uh, with all the. In other words, the autonomous vehicle is upon us. Uh, living in Pittsburgh, we were, we're, I guess, very fortunate to have uh, Google and Uber here doing a lot of their experimentation. They have these fleets of these Volvos that uh, have these interesting space-looking uh, equipment rotating on top of their vehicles, and, and, and in the back, there's something uh, really, you know. So they're mapping the 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 whole world as, as they drive through it, 360. And uh, I think one of the reasons they came to Pittsburgh is, uh, as I mentioned, we, we have the constricted roadway system. If you ever go to some of these great cities that have these, like Atlanta, there's six lanes, eight lanes, Chicago, you know, and, and they move very slowly and you merge and you have time to get on, off and on. In Pittsburgh, you come from five or six different directions and you've got to scatter. you got to get you got a quarter mile to go from this lane to this lane because if you miss it, you're going to go 10 miles down the road and be very upset. So you have this ornery uh, you know, non-collaborative. You know, uh, there's no, there's no co-competition when you drive in yeah. uh, Pittsburgh, Co- is there? Co-competition, co-op, well, co-op. Well, hey, okay, whatever, whatever, they whatever, whatever. The, so, so the, Let's the, get Josh on the show because I'd love to hear about the CES. And Josh has got such unique insights, and you can follow Josh. It's just Josh Bradshaw on Facebook, right? Yeah. Yeah, you know, just I, I, he, he's worth following he put, on Facebook. He's he's he a cool dude. A lot of good stuff in there. He's, he's just a bright guy, and uh, he's uh, just. Very energetic because, uh, and he, he's very, he's very forward facing. He doesn't, you know, he, he, his knack is knowing what's coming. And like you say, being able to move the checkers first. So I think if we could, if we could get, uh, Ken Sinclair and Josh on next week's show, that would be a, that'd be an awesome show, buddy. <laughs> All right. Well, speaking of some future stuff for you, meet Flytrex drone delivery system, a delivery solution which will elevate your business sky high. Now, we don't uh, deviate from the beaten path very often, but every once in a while, you talk about a video that really captures the first of all the progress where we're at you know so the rate of adoption is this feasible is this are we going to see this in our lifetime are we going to see this next week or we see some people saying you know that they're going to have uh, uber uh, air in 2021 in certain cities but this really truly you know, this guy here he came from uh, the israeli uh version of nasa and he is a brilliant guy uh, we have his uh, his bio down at the bottom of the post uh he came from uh He's, uh, his name is Yariv Bash. He's the CEO of Flytrex, a drone technology company providing comprehensive autonomous drone delivery systems enable business, uh, blah, blah, blah. He was the founder and CEO of Space uh, IL, the Israeli team of the Google Lunar X Prize competition. So this guy's the real McCoy. And, you know, I've never read a more comprehensive, uh, easy to understand uh, interview of where we are at with drones and how certain countries already have cleared the the, the – Optics, opticals, uh, op- yeah, opticals in the uh, what do you call them? The barriers of entries, the uh, the things that you just can't get something done until the government uh, endorses it or condones it or approves it. So, what's the biggest barrier to widespread drone de- drone deliveries at the moment? And uh, you know, he just spells it out. Regulatory authorities are understandably concerned about the safety and other implications of widespread usage of drones, especially autonomous drones that go beyond the line of sight. So I don't want to keep reading the whole thing, but if you ever want to know where we're at in the drone world uh, as far as a progress report, this uh, this post has uh, you know the uh, last up-to-date report from robotics. So these people – this gentleman is from Iceland and it's already deployed and they really and truly think governments are going to adopt it, municipalities are going to adopt it, certainly businesses because he says in some part of the interview that it's actually cheaper – the system will be deliver the delivery system will be cheaper using drones and it will be using land transport and whatever and and they show this video where there's a helipad somewhere in your neighborhood or in your part of the city like if you divide the city up into four different points so if you need something quickly you can drive to the heliport pick up your stuff like you go into the post office well kenny you remember at the realcom ibicon show we saw well, this was three or four years ago remember that company that came in with the drones and using drones in the smart building controls industry and in hvac industry and they were showing how the drone you know in terms of, i think it's going to be standard operating equipment also with uh with your your folks at the um 
uh, you know, your, your maintenance chiefs, right? Because they were showing sure. how you could actually go up and you can do inspections of the units, the rooftop units without going on the roof. They even showed one drone coming down and uh, blowing the leaves out of a vet. Uh, somebody forgets their keys. They can, you know, they, they, can, they can transport them that way, but also security, right? So if they get a sure. security alert, you can send the drone out. So the drones are here, buddy. And, uh, and you know, but I got to think, I, you know, we are, if we can ever pronounce this gentleman's name, we should see if we can get him on the show. But uh, and, and don't tell me you know how to, because I heard you try and we would have to get the pronunciation right. But uh, but that could be a really cool interview. Uh, uh, I'd, I'd like to do that. But you got to figure that UPS is going to something like UPS and FedEx would would probably be the people that would drive that. Right. And, and, and start that before anybody else had a chance to. Well, I, I, the, the part of the country you live in, I think, is going to drive the adoption progress, you know, in the rate of adoption. I think, you know, the West Coast, particularly California, has a, a very progressive for them. Oh, don't you remember your friend Lindsay Baker talking about she was getting tacos delivered by a drone? Yeah, that was a, that was a niche. Uh, that was a community, uh, Bay, Bayside community, where the drones yeah. were flying over. The, How's the Lindsay Baker doing, by the way? Do you ever talk to her anymore? No, but she posts a lot. Uh, they're doing real well. Hey, I, uh, she, how come she, does she post on our site? Well, she tweets a lot, but uh, my, here's how small the world is. Uh, my wife's good friend's husband uh, left one business, and now he works for Google uh-huh. and in the Google office here in Pittsburgh. And guess what they use to control their heating and cooling? He shows me Comfy. So he's got, they got Comfy uh, in Pittsburgh here at a very large deployment, the Google office center here. Well, listen, if you, if you know that person, you and I both know that we could – probably provide a much better technology than no offense, Lindsay Baker and company. But since you don't post on our site, I think we can go after you a little bit. You got a great, great idea, but Kenny, come on. We know Josh Bradshaw. We know Therese Sullivan. And now, you know, this individual, certainly we could show him a better technology. Uh, Lindsay Baker, okay. come on the show and defend yourself, right? Defend your technology. We, you I, we, we're, I'm, sort of, I'm, so, I'm sort oh, of telling you, no, Lindsay's brilliant. But what I'm getting at is I'd love to get her on the show. I'd love to get her active in the control trends community. So I'm throwing down the headset and inviting Lindsay Baker on. Otherwise, Kenny, you can ask her really tough questions at the next time you interview her uh, at one of Jim Young's show. But listen, talking about great interviews and great people, how about introducing our guests this week? Love to, Eric. We have with us today uh, Dan Flaherty, uh, Ad Vice President of Sales for Acuity Brands and Distech Controls, and Mr. Lance Patterson, Sales and Support, Sales Support and Engineering at Distech Controls. Welcome to the show, guys. Welcome, guys. Glad to have you here. Thanks, Eric. Appreciate it. Glad to be here again. Thanks for having us. Well, Dan, it's been a while since uh, we've had Distech or Acuity on Control Trends. Uh, time's flying by. So uh, please tell us some of the uh, important updates and how Acuity and Distech are unifying the building controls and lighting controls industries. I uh, appreciate being here again. And uh, we had Ryan Sen on the show uh, not too long ago. And I think he started going over some of our products, mainly the Eclipse uh, product and solution. Um, and we've made some great advancements in that even over the last couple of months. So excited to be here today. We're going to show uh, you a little bit about what we're, we've been up to. Um, but really, Acuity as a company as well has uh, restructured a little bit. We now have a technology company um, within Acuity. And that technology company is responsible for the software, the hardware um, of our technology solutions. And obviously, our technology solutions include building controls, lighting controls, and our IoT platform, um, Atrius, which is really our connected lighting solution. Well, very, very cool. But dude, look, so we'd be remiss if we didn't thank you guys for the platinum the sponsorship, uh, for the Control Trends Awards. Mm-hmm. This tech Acuity is up for, gosh, I don't know how many awards, a ton of them, including you, Dan. You're up for the, the PID Award, Passion, Integrity, Dedication. So, man, wish you luck with that. I mean, that mm-hmm. is a a great, great uh, award for you, knowing you for years, and uh, man, you're going to be a strong contender in that category. I appreciate that, Eric. Listen, we had so much fun last year in, in Vegas at, at the event. Um, took a nice limo ride there, really brought the full team, and it was Distech's first year attending the award ceremony and being part of the program, and I tell you what, great um, great response from everybody. Really an eye-opener, I think, for uh, how well the program uh, has done and grown over the years, and and what an honor to just be included um, as part of that community, right? Having Distec there as as part of the HVAC community. Well, I'll do it for the rest of our community. The Control Trends Award. If you want to see how to do an award show, how to accept an award, you need to go back and look at that video footage of uh, 
Dan and the team as they won, I think, four awards last year. And guys, you definitely know how to roll, man. We got to get a picture of you guys in that limo up on the. Uh, we'll do. Yeah, you, we'll, we'll have to put that in the show <laughs> notes because you guys definitely know how to roll. So, uh, well, cool, dude. Well, listen, man. Uh, uh, congratulations, and and I got to tell you, Lance, you look like you could be a young gun nominee this year. Uh, oh, that's <laughs> a nice ring to it. Yeah, Lance Patterson, the young gun of the year. I like it. Well, Dan, you know, you guys are known for your great, uh, great tech support and your great team, and you know, I know you guys are the best tech support again. Tell our community a little about what Lance does, and sure, and, uh, yeah, yeah. I uh, I call this role really the secret sauce of Distech. So, um, you know, we have a philosophy in sales for Distech of really having account managers that help small businesses, you know, grow and, and be be better every day. And that's really our regional sales manager role. But in that, um, we understand our channel needs uh, the technical, uh, both pre and post sales support um, as well. So we have a unique uh, philosophy where we want to put um, technical resources in the field where jobs are, where customers are, and where our products get installed every day. And, you know, especially as we transform our channel into doing much more lighting control, as it's really a single solution now with building controls, we understand our channel partners need to uh, figure out how to do lighting control and learn that solution. And these folks are there as really first job support, um, local training, and, and they're there to walk with you step in step, right, of, uh, of getting into IP, getting into lighting control, and really taking that next leap forward um, on technology besides uh, just core temperature control. Yeah, that's a really, really cool concept. And Lance, speak a bit about, so, you know, when you engage with a customer, sort of walk us through sort of that process and how it works from your perspective. Yeah, so typically what we try to do is um, we try to navigate or help our chill channel navigate the process uh, more than anything, um, all the way from start from the design phase, um, all the way through the implementation. And, uh, and like Dan said, even through um, part of the project support as well. Um, and then there's also some technical sales involved as well, where um, we deliver some technical sales presentations, that sort of thing. So, so first and foremost, we're really there for our um, for our channel more than anything. So, uh, Eric, we had a lot of fun together last year at IBCon. It was a great show for us. We, uh, you know, we piqued the interest of a lot of end users, and this guy here for me has been on the road almost nonstop, um, supporting that interest from the show. Some of these uh, so some of these clients are Fortune 50. Uh, companies, the the technology who's who in America, and, and they're looking at uh, products right now that, that deliver more than just temperature control, right? But true IP, uh, IoT controllers that have a lot to do with data collection and um, analytics around data. And uh, he's my secret sauce right now on, on making sure that they really understand what this stuff can and can't do. Yep. Really cool. And another sort of innovative thing you guys are doing. And, and I tell you what, it's like there's so many choices out there now. And, you know, yeah. we've talked a lot about that. You really got to get your messaging right. And, you know, because, mm -hmm. again, if you don't understand, you're not going to make a decision. So, Lance, so, you know, hats off to you, man. Great job. You look like young gun material. Dan, can you check his driver's license real quick to make sure he's... <laughs> yeah, uh, I'll, I'll vouch. <laughs> <laughs> guys, uh, Dan, that's uh, great stuff. Uh, so how are the traditional systems integrators or distributors... Uh, electrical channels working more closely together nowadays to provide better service to the construction community and ultimately the building owner? The, the challenging thing is this message resonates so well with building owners. The value that uh, simpler and, and better integrated technology delivers um, is, is beyond just energy savings. So now what we have to do is essentially get the construction cycle and the channels of procurement to, uh, to adopt that and find ways to deliver that solution. What is uh, tremendous about Acuity and Distech is we have both of those channels, right? We have the electrical channel, we have the mechanical channel, and especially on the electrical side, uh, Acuity is the market share leader in, in lighting, right? In lighting controls. So our opportunity right now of partnering electrical channels that we have great relationships with with the mechanical community and finding ways to work well together and deliver the solution to the end user. Um, it's what we work on every day, right? And what's interesting about this is you have people um, that see it as the future, want to redefine their company a little bit and the, and the value that they deliver. Scott Cochran talks about master systems integrators all the time, but it's about delivering technology solutions, not just temperature control anymore, right? Um, and having that lighting channel there 
um, really step in step with you to be able to deliver lighting in, in addition to building control. Um, it's what we can deliver as really our commercial value proposition. What sort of headwind do you run into? Because you know, there's been a traditional way new construction's been done, and right. it's like things are in silos. It seems like you guys, uh, just by the nature, the way you guys are put together, are, are silo buster, for lack of a better word. Are you running yeah. any headwinds in terms of, uh, of traditional ways of doing it? Yeah, you, you know, and in some markets, still tremendous headwind. Um, so we see really headwind in two areas. One, it's just getting partners um, to work well together in, in the various construction cycles. Um, the other headwind is IP, to be honest with you. There, there's still a tremendous um, learning curve of getting uh, these solutions, which are IP, IoT devices, um, getting, getting our contracting channel to really understand networks and, and IT and, and working well with the IT departments. In fact, Lance, you, you've worked recently with, uh, I mean, this is what you do every day, right? Mm -hmm. get, get contractors um, comfortable with selling different solutions. Why don't you talk about some of the recent examples? Yeah, so um, we've had a few school districts that have uh, adopted this, and, and really the idea is to get the IT um, um, people involved really from an early stage and get them adopting it. When they see the type of security measures you take on a on a IP enabled controller, it's not really more about security. It's more of just about kind of an infrastructure thing and 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 what they're wanting to deploy. Um, but I'm starting to see more and more adoption from the IT department that that they're really accepting this because with with IoT everything's connected to the internet. You talk today, you know, a toaster can talk to your <laughs> to your phone, and you know, your refrigerator can tell you when you're low on milk. I mean, yeah. you know, so so to bring that into the commercial space, it's still a fairly new concept, um, but it's gaining traction. It's gaining ground for sure. Yeah. Hey, uh, well, Dan, what tangible uh, va what value what tangible values are you witnessing? Uh, by having building controls and lighting controls operating uh, together. Yeah, so uh, right now in Washington, D.C., on K Street, probably arguably some of the most valuable real estate you know, in D.C., if not the country, um, we have major property developers building million-square-foot office buildings. Um, and in the core and shell, the strategy of having a solution that delivers both lighting control and building control um, in a much more simplest, simplistic fashion makes a ton of sense. Um, what's interesting in this one case, we, uh, we had a nice show with a lot of the future tenants of this facility. And for those future tenants, the, the value props um, just rang true, right? They, understand, they understood very quickly what connected lighting could do for user um, uh, experience in a building, um, understanding where assets are in a building, um, doing wayfinding or people counting. They understood what um, capturing that data could give them today and more importantly, long term, right? Um, we don't know what some of this data is going to be used for in, in the long term. And, and there are smarter companies out there too who develop apps that will do a great job figuring out how to best utilize this data. But the core understanding of putting the infrastructure in your building today to be able to get you there and take you there um, like I said, really made a ton of sense for their future occupants. And of course, the property developer, once they saw the demand from future occupants saying this has to, this has to be in my, in my facility, I, I will be part of, um, it was a pretty easy decision there. So that's on a commercial office building environment. But when you really think about solutions, they're vertically based. What a healthcare institution wants will be different than what K-12 wants, right? Doing asset tracking and then understanding where people are in an active uh, shooter situation. Um, these are all very unique value propositions by vertical, and that's how we go to market, right? Our solutions are designed vertically, and our channels to market have to be well adept at uh, experience uh, by vertical market um, and have some uh, pretty uh, strong credibility to market by market. You know, Dan, it's been my experience. This is so cool because it's been my experience that real estate owners are just like everybody else. They have competition, right? They're competing yeah. with other real estate people to get people into their building. Right. So, uh, you know, the fact awesome. that you're addressing these things and bringing them together, I mean, how does your, your mm -hmm. technology seems like it plays really, really, really well with, uh, you know, I mean, let's go back to sort of talking about the, you know, the one X, one yeah. X, hundred X rule or whatever. Cause sure. it seems like you guys have a real understanding of it. When you can combine lighting, which can include, improve people's uh, uh, performance in the workplace. Right. 
right. with building automation controls, it, it's sort of a different game. So, so I think I think maybe one of the things that's lost in our industry is we're not talking to the the building owners enough about how we can have your building be more viable and have you compete with other real estate fair. people, right? Yeah, so. fair enough. So uh, we understand that need to. Um, we are actively ramping up our marketing uh, departments, both in acuity and in distech uh, collectively to be able to then go tell this story. But if you go to Europe, to your point, a property developer very often um, specifies in a building an application. Um, they believe that the value of one, attracting tenants into their facility is about that experience that you have working there, right? So they'll very often say that it must connect to this app. And oh, by the way, these are the great things that my app does. So I can attract the talent from across the street, right? And, and so uh, the value of our solution really as an IoT controller running an Android operating system that talks RESTful API you have that conversation with an IT person writing the application for that building and they get it, right? They collect that data um, and are able to integrate temperature control and lighting control very easily in, into the application that's being designed in that building. I can tell you at IBCon meeting with some of the largest property developers in, in America, um, they are all thinking that same way. They want to create a, a, a user experience in their facility that is differentiated from any of their competitors. Um, and they will attract talent regardless of where it is uh, in America um, based on that you know, guaranteed uh, user experience service levels almost, if you will. Very, very cool. Well, listen, you, you seem to be really ahead of the curve with the IP controllers and technology. I mean, this is evidenced by the fact that the Eclip, your Eclipse controller is up for so many yeah. uh, Control Trends awards. Uh, dude, you know, Kenny's looking at those little blue boxes that you're holding there and wants to know what the hell they are, but what, what trends are you seeing okay. with IP and, and, and uh, you know, how do lighting and building controls work together? Is it, is it complicated? Okay, so th this is fun for us. So I'm going to show you something here real, real quickly. Um, these are our core Eclipse controllers. Um, you know, it, it uh, was up for many awards last year, Control Trends, and, and we won many. So I um, appreciate the community there. Um, what I have in my hand, really two controllers. You have our core building controller, really the brains, if you will. And then in any application, um, engineering a solution, you have, you know, modules that do many things in a building. Acuity for two years has been doing lighting controls essentially with this product right here. So again, being a market share leader with fixtures, they then took the lighting control opportunity around that fixture install base and have done just a tremendous great job. That, that full install base now is uh, a fair game, if you will, for our integrator channel to go install BMS controls. Our uh, solution today, um, typically in the past, each of these controls, you connect to an I IP line and then uh, you know, essentially integrate them. So our new controllers now, if you think about this as lighting, and that is the building controller, the simplicity, the simplicity of really pulling it both together is essentially a plug and play uh, solution just like that. Kind of like peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> and a little bit, <laughs> a little bit, but if you think about the software that resides in here, it's connected. Obviously you saw the hardware connection. Um, being able to deliver solutions that take these two different uh, industries and bring them together better um, is what we wake up, you know, thinking about every day. Our engine, the same engineers, um, wake up thinking about lighting and, and building control at the same time uh, about how to make it more simply, right? So the the fun part about this, and if you can think about the future, obviously, is Lance and I just now had to connect something, um, but why connect two things, right? And and so this will only be advanced more and more in the future. So Lance, real quick, why don't you just give a quick uh, explanation of of uh, a little bit more about the, what those are? Yeah. So essentially, Eric, you know, you you talk all the time about pushing as much computing power out to the edge as possible. Um, that's exactly what we're trying to do. We're trying to take all the logic and, and the quote unquote integration between lighting and HVAC and push those as far out to the edge as possible. You know, if I, if I have a lighting fixture that's, that's feeding me occupancy, um, you know, I don't want to send that all the way across the network to a head-end controller and then back down to my room level when I could just bring that um, directly in. Um, the great part about this is you know, it, it, it integrates directly, it, it plugs directly in and it comes um, onto our GFX programming tool that, that, we're, that we're pretty well known for at this point. Um, and then you can integrate that right into your logic, your, your HVAC logic to be able to do some really cool things as well, so. 
Yeah, what's a lot of fun too is, and we give this example a lot, in, in a conference room, not only do you um, care about it being occupied or unoccupied now, you can actually start understanding how well occupied it is, um, how many people are in it. And you think about the energy play on that, especially with sequence of operations. But again, to your point, Eric, on the 330-300, it's not just about the energy play. And that, then it's about understanding, well, does this conference room get overbooked all the time, right? At, or is it not booked at all based on real live data? And, and then being able to feed that back to the facility owner to make really smart decisions off of it. Yeah, and, and, and speaking of the live data, I mean, we all have modules that will will produce zero to 10 volt outputs or, or digital on off for lighting fixtures. Um, but, but this will actually plug in directly to a digital fixture. So with that digital fixture, not only can we do all the same control that we could before, plus a little bit more even, um, we can also harvest all the data that's out of those fixtures as well. So um, any of the data, the Bluetooth data, um, any sort of Wi-Fi that you may be incorporating into the fixture as well, um, um, even energy data from that fixture, um, all that fun stuff um, bringing directly into the HVAC um, side of the house basically. Well, it's really cool because, you know, for our listeners out there may or may not know, Acuity not only acquired Distech, they also acquired uh, DG Logic. And, and uh, as a matter of fact, they got a question in the chat room. They want to know, has Eugene Mazzo and Dennis and the boys in black, because we always call them the men in black, <laughs> have they influenced the dress code at Acuity? I mean, is, it, or is the black European right. cut suit, is, is that the, the, the dress of, of the day? Yeah, yeah. rumor has it many more people are taking ballroom dancing to <laughs> at Acuity right now. So, yeah. Nice. Now, you nice do, Eugene's doing a great job still on the software side, and that software um, resides in all of our Eclipse controllers. So, very proud of that uh, solution that they've uh, been very successful at. We recently read that Laurent Vemere, formerly with Schneider, is now leading a group called Acuity Technology Group. Can you explain what that's all about and uh, how how's Martin doing? He's also up for a Control Trends Award. So I want to start with Martin uh, because obviously being a Control Trends winner last year, of, yeah. uh, co-winner of Executive of the Year, um, he, he's just done phenomenal things, uh, obviously, at Distech uh, over its history, right, number two employee. Um, he's now responsible for all hardware solutions that include lighting controls, right, building controls, um, in addition to uh, the hardware that goes into intelligent fixtures. Um, Greg Carter runs our software uh, business for us. He's an uh, uh, ex-Cisco, really understands IoT, really brought the uh, Acuity Atrius IoT platform to market as well at Lightfair. Um, you know, great success there. And then Laurent um, at Schneider really... Uh, brought them into the IoT realm, right? And and that's where we as a technology company see everything going, um, r really being uh, intelligent devices that collect data and, and are housing that data um, and, and then offering up that data to various channels to do great things with. Um, we believe the building controller is at the center of that. Um, I, I know various companies right now have very different strategies around that. Some are questioning the value of the building controller. And, and frankly, you know, from a technical standpoint, when, when you think about a lighting fixture just as uh, an occupancy for a uh, sensor, for example, if you go to an airport, um, there could be 100,000 occupancy sensors. Being able to take that data and make sense of it, uh, in our firm belief, is going to require uh, IoT local edge controllers, uh, both on analytics and then um, serving up data in an intelligent way Absolutely having a cloud uh, value proposition and solution there, um, but it is about the edge and the cloud at the same time, in our belief, it's not one or the other. Um, so having all this technology come together in a total solution that is a sensory network of light fixtures, intelligent controllers that do a lot with data, um, and then offering that package um, based on a vertical application is really why we formed the technology company uh, under his leadership and his great experience there at Schneider taking, uh, taking them into this realm. Dan and Lance, man, what's next for you guys? Uh, I think at AHR last year, we, were, we, we, we uh, really made our entrance. Um, so within a year, we've uh, signed up a tremendous number of uh, system integrator partners. Um, some of these are part of billion dollar, uh, you know, public or private companies that really have the capital to do great things in the market. So we are working very uh, closely with our channel to take them into the lighting controls um, and ultimately, you know, the lighting solution uh, market. It's beyond just temperature control now. 
So that is first and foremost on our initiative of um, just making that channel um, offer more market by market. And, you know, the second thing I think from a technical standpoint is delivering solutions that are even simpler than this and, and make even more sense from a value prop standpoint by vertical. And again, just, you know, so fortunate to be at Acuity and Distech right now, where again, um, those same people are responsible for electrical and mechanical industries trying to solve the same problem, right? And then, you know, of course, we have a few tricks up our sleeve, too, in the way of technology. Distech has always been a true innovator. Um, love shows like AHR, where we tend to launch a lot as well. And then finally, um, here to announce as well, we're, we're, next year is going to be a roadshow year for us where we're going to bring our resources, both from headquarters, from a technical standpoint, product management and sales um, to you in the marketplace to be able to work even that much closely more, more with you on technical training and lighting and lighting controls. So uh, we're quite famous for doing our customer conference every couple of years. Um, this is this upcoming year is an off year for us, which means we're going to come to you. So look forward to that. In your local uh, in your local town, and uh, look forward to seeing integrators there, distributors, um, you, you know, the consultant com community, end users, and of course, we're going to bring our great lighting agents as well. And then uh, Eric's drum quest will be the one that uh, helps us film a lot of this and get the word out there because you know, again, Eric, to your point you made before, the end user community really has been asking for this. It resonates well. We can't get the message out quick enough. There you go, man. Guys, thank you so much. We've been talking to Lance Patterson and Dan Flaherty from Acuity Disc Tech Controls. Guys, thank you so much. Thank you for your sponsorship. Man, thank you for coming on the show, man. You guys are doing some great stuff. Keep on keeping on. And if you want to see Dan and Lance and the rest of Team Disc Tech Acuity, go to the 2017 Control Trends Awards because they'll be there. They'll be the guys getting out the limousine. They'll be the guys hooting and hollering. They'll go. be the guys having a good time, man. Guys, thanks so much. All right. See you in Chicago. Thanks, thanks guys. Eric. That was fantastic, sure fantastic was. stuff from uh, from from the team there at uh, Distech. So, uh, what do we have up next, buddy? Next up, we have Optigo's Visual Backnet, shining a light on Princeton's network problems. Now, the uh, the, the stories we you know we keep talking about the generating the marketing collateral that's going to differentiate your solution or your product or your people from others. And this is this is this is uh, you know where the rubber meets the the rubber meets the road with a case study from a very uh, you know, well-recognized university. Princeton University turned to Visual Backnet to solve their problems. Uh, so when uh, they, they had a stadium that lights were turning on themselves in the middle of the night, not just costing a bunch of money, but waking up nearby residents who were very disturbed because uh, you can know what football stadium lights are like. The uh, engineer there, Gary Brank, Ran Cato discovered that he had problems with his network. He saw a network health score of 16% with almost 200 global who is broadcast and 14 unresponsive devices. So the success of communication was flooding the network with activity that caused denial of service and brought de devices down. So when you get that clear text messaging, when you understand what the problem is because you have a tool that you can visually observe the health of your network, then they called in the two vendors. They brought in automated logic and Siemens, and together those two entities spent four days fixing the network. They pinpointed problem devices, fixed configurations, and separated some of the new devices onto separate networks to reduce overall traffic and eliminate the denial of service. So, oh man, I, I, I would have great loved to been a, been a fly on the wall with that thing because now you got the data, and you know we typically get two different vendors, and they go, "It's not my stuff; it's their stuff." And now you're sitting there going, okay, well, these advice, the, these uh, uh, occurrences are happening on your network and these occurrences are happening on your network. So don't give me this. It's the other guy's fault. So good stuff. Ping Yao and that team out there is really cool. And they got the hockey player, remember? The professional yeah. hockey player that works with them. So uh, good stuff, man. Ping and team, we really appreciate your sponsorship. We love having you coming to the Control Trends uh, Awards this year and being part of the Control Trends community. So encourage you to reach out, check these guys out. Uh, they got good products. The stuff works. And uh, it's great stuff, Kenny. Great stuff. All right, big dog, what we have up, as they say, next. <laughs> next up, we have the Niagara Summit 2018. Register now to secure your early bird rates. So uh, this is a 
Niagara Summit 18 is going to be down there in New Orleans, uh, April 15th through the 17th of 2018. Don't miss this chance to learn more about Niagara, how it's shaping the future of connected devices and systems, along with what's fueling buildings, industrial IoT, and other important technology trends. You have the opportunity to explore leading technology offered by exhibitors and enjoy networking and social activities with all the all that New Orleans has to offer. And it sure does. Uh, we were down there uh, two years ago, and we had a great deal of fun, learned a great deal, and met some of the smartest guys in the business. And uh, We got to march in a parade, too, which is really cool. And we marched in a parade. Yeah, yep. I, they, they pulled out. They, you know, New Orleans is a great location for that. And don't you remember when they had that opening reception? Uh, we actually got video of it. You can go back and see it where uh, you you got the Superdome on one side where the Falcons will beat the New Orleans Saints in the playoffs game. And you had the hotel we were staying at and the, where the conference was on the other side. And there must have been, what, three or 4,000 people. It was mo- one of the most incredible uh, sort of just visually – to, yeah, to really get the scope of how Niagara has affected the world and Tritium has affected the world, it was just incredible. Just the visual of all the people there, and they had a band there. It was uh, they, they do a great job. Ed Merwin and his team, and and Jim Bland, they just do a fantastic job. Major uh, League, Major League, Major League is it. That's it. Well said, Kenny. They're well, major we, a, we have a comment there. It says, "Hey, Ken, what's the deadline to vote for the control trends?" Uh, and it's going to be what January fifteenth, Melanie. Uh, we had a comment inquiry on that post. So January 15th will be your last day to vote for the control transport. That's right. That's right. And then we send it off to uh, uh, the FBI and uh, the certified public accountants and and the IRS to count the votes. Right, Kenny? (laughs) What's up next, big dog? (laughs) Johnson Controls, the company that invented the room thermostat just reinvented it. This is a cool post to uh, the glass thermostat, and that's spelled G-L-A-S. And this is from the, uh, the the big think tank there at Johnson. It's a beautiful thermostat. It's a smart thermostat. Uh, it, it, uh, it helps create a space that's efficient and healthy. It offers a translucent. See, that's that's where they broke the uh, – they, they raised a new standard uh, in style. You know, so many people trying to make the right color. You have uh, – that could be as a black one. Nest has a – Honeywell-ish looking round thermostat, you know, and, and uh, Honeywell, of course, has their red links and their squares, uh, you know, and they're all they're all really good. And, and the, you know, I mean, smart thermostats, I have a wiser air on my wall, and um, they're all good thermostats, and they have incredible capabilities. They're web-enabled. They have all the geofencing. They have adaptive recovery, intelligent recovery. I mean, it's you can't even use all the features in, uh, unless you start integrating it to your, your, your Google uh, – we have a Google Mini, whatever now, and we can ask Google, hey, Google, what's the temperature outside? Hey, Google, put on some music. Hey, Google. And we, we had fun with that for the first week we got it. It was a Christmas thing. But this now is getting, uh, you know, it's just really, uh, it's a simple, adaptive technology that creates a delightful interaction. with, And it's clever. And, and it, it's cool looking. It could be the coolest looking thermostat I, out there. I, th- I think it's the coolest looking thermostat now. And I think the operative thing here is Johnson chose Microsoft to partner with. So now Microsoft sure. is in, in, in the smart thermostat game. So you know they're going to build off of that relationship and come out sure. with cool stuff. But I love it, Kenny, because, you know, uh, and hats off to Jenny Stentz, Chris Eichmann, and the whole team at Johnson. I mean, boy, they, they do they do a lot of great research and development and, you know, come out with great products. The Varus, this is a great example of that, as, as well as their systems. And, you know, one of the things about Johnson most over the years, Kenny, is, is they're not necessarily the first people to get into the game with, with the new technology. Although, you know, arguably they were the first people to develop the thermostat, right? But, uh, but boy, when they come out with the product, I mean, you know it works. And, you know, they thought it through. It works. It's innovative. And, and I love it, you know. And then, you know, I, I got an idea for you, Chris and Jenny. I mean, I think you know, the next big thing in our, our sort of uh, social media thing is I think you should come out with the vanity stat, which is basically it takes a picture of you and to put your picture on the stat. I mean, I think Kim Kardashian to get behind that and it, it would be a good thing that, you know, you like the vanity stat. And then it's like, you know, like, and, and, and you know, it's a, you can say mirror, mirror on the, on the wall, a thermostat, thermostat on the wall. Who's the fairest of them all? And they go, you, Kenny, you, it's you. It's all you, buddy. What do you think? Uh, good thing you you did other <laughs> things, but I'm, I'm not going to go. <laughs> Anyhow, in summary, it has an adaptive schedule to intuitively, attentively maintain efficient and comfortable space, seamless mobile experience so users can manage their space from anywhere in the world, voice control from a Microsoft Cortana to adjust, ref, refine, and redefine each space, indoor and outdoor air quality monitoring to help create a healthy space, and wire detection and streamlined setup 
instructions for straightforward installation. So it, it leverages the technology from all the other reliable building control leading uh, innovative developments from Johnson, and they've taken it down to the thermostat level. So it, uh, it's a 2018 Innovation Award finalist at AHR Expo uh, based on its innovative design, creativity, application and value, and market impact. So well done, Johnson Controls. Well done, Johnson Controls, and well done, Microsoft. Very well done. So Kenny Smyers, work. we're coming down to our last post of the week. What, what do we have up there, big dog? What's the last but not the least? Well, I'll tell you, this is a, a great post, too, because uh, we were uh, fortunate to meet the IoT team from Blimo. Uh, we had a chance to have a couple uh, video uh, conferences with them or Skype or, or telephone. And I think I was on the telephone, couldn't get on the uh, Skype call. But um, Blimo Solutions, from design to delivery, many hands with one intention, complete customer satisfaction. And I think this is one of the best uh, marketing posts I've seen in quite a while because it throws it all there. I says, Belimo has earned a place of market leader by valuing ingenuity and craftsmanship and never resting on our accomplishments. Very simply, we strive to build damper actuators, control valves, and sensors that solve comfort and energy challenges, perform flawlessly, and earn your trust through a long and productive life cycle. And they've come up with this term, this acronym, CISM, C-E-S-I-M, and it stands for the um, Comfort energy savings, safety and security uh, for the people in the property, easy installation and commissioning with reduced maintenance. So all those words are captured in the acronym system. But, uh, you know, they've, you, know and can, you can't help but see the five-year warranty that they, they kind of set the standard in the market. Uh, now, the Internet of Things, uh, again, they've developed their website again or uh, re re recasted it in a different uh, you know dimension it's a, it's an incredible website it has a whole bunch of information uh, for the so if you need information about valving or damper actuator selections or if you want some background and stuff uh, they have a tr the university they actually give away uh, you, if you register uh, they they will let you have access to some very very valuable engineering information that makes sure that you pick the right stuff because sometimes it's still so hard to do uh, you know despite the fact that we have all these tools people still undersize or oversize and, and there's reasons for that and uh, then of course they go into their products you know you've got the uh, actuators you've got the, the valves and you know and you've got five or six different styles of valves the so pressure independent valves the CCV uh, characterized control valves you've got the quick compact valve the QCVs you've got the butterfly valves uh, mechanical pressure independent valves you've got the pressure independent quick connect valve, the PIQCV, and then the pressure independent character characterized control valve, the PICCV. So great stuff there. Then the yeah, don't, sensors, for, don't forget their smoke dampers either, buddy. They got the sure. smoke dampers as well too. So yeah, but Kenny, needless to say, I mean, these guys are, you know, phenomenal and uh, coming out with new stuff. Like you, I think you started to say that, you know, they're, they're, they're entering the sensor game and, and, you know, they've told us they're going to reinvent it. So we're excited about that. And Blimo is another one of those companies that, uh, but when it comes out, you can take it to the bank, man. I think people love that brand because the stuff works. And uh, so it's good stuff there. But with that big dog, man, you got football. We got football. You, I know you want to go out and work on your tan. You look a little pale before the control trends awards. This is what, 10 to below zero. The sun's out in Pittsburgh. So uh, <laughs> Let me see what you're in the polar bear like. club, right? Up there. Don't you go no, swimming in the river no. with your brother, Tommy? That's Tommy. Tommy would do that. I, I would never do that. But uh, <laughs> there are folks to do it. Okay, so we're, we're, we're on the positive side. We're at 12 degrees. There you go, holy, buddy. Holy. There and you the fact go. It is getting warmer now. So we're, we're, we're getting a – so Monday is going to be a high of 35, Tuesday 35. So for my next paddle tennis match, it's going to be 52 degrees. We're going to go from minus well, there you 10 go, man. to plus 52. So you can work on the tan. That's going to be good stuff. So, Well, listen, I tell you what, Kenny, with that, buddy, I want to thank our guests this week, uh, uh, Dan Flaherty and Lance Patterson from Acuity Disc Tech Controls. A great interview there, and, and thank you for their sponsorship as well. The Control Trends Awards are coming up. If you haven't voted yet, it's time to vote. If you haven't gotten your tickets yet, uh, the best way to get a ticket is to reach out to the sponsors. The sponsors have the tickets, and I think part of the reason they buy the tickets, Kenny, is they want to host potential customers. So we're getting emails every day at how do I get tickets and I think where you start is with, with you know the sponsors you want to know who the sponsors are look on the Control Trends website it's right there but uh, if they have tickets I'm, in most cases they're going to love to have you there so uh, a special thanks to our Control Trends community thank you for a great 2017 uh, Kenny our, 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 our viewership viewership has gone up about another 35% our YouTube subscribers have gone up to well over 6,000 
Uh, the podcasts have gone up another 40%, so the community is really supporting us. We appreciate that, and we look forward to a great 2018, and we would be remiss if we didn't start our new show off with Remember. I'm, I'm sorry. I, we'd be remiss if we did not start off the first episode of 2018 with Remember, Be Bold, Stay in Control, and Stay Relevant. Indeed, Eric. Indeed, Kenny Smyers. And there we have it.